What's going on, new gamers? Today we're back with some more Goth Knights. What I'm going to bring you is an awesome build for Nightwing that makes you truly invincible. So if you want to be able to take on anything in the game and have a lot of fun while you do it, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back everybody, today we're going to be going over a little bit more Gotham Knights and we're going to be jumping into a Nightwing build. This build centres around being completely unstoppable, having a lot of fun, being able to support your team but also being just able to take any amount of beats. I've played this on the hardest content and have had absolutely no issues whatsoever and in fact I'd say if you're playing properly it's probably impossible to actually get knocked down with this build. What I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck on a little bit of gameplay, show you what it's all about, and then I'll go over the full build guide after. Right, so going over his gear, what I've put on for his suit is a reinforced suit. I absolutely love this. This keeps your player alive. It's just one of the best things in the game for survivability. So if we scroll all the way down, the gear property is going to be what you're after. The TKO heal is absolutely amazing. Knocking out an enemy regenerates health over time. As long as you're beating your enemies, this keeps you constantly topped up on your health and makes it very hard for anyone to take you out. Final Resolve increases defense for a short duration when your health is low. Again, makes you almost impossible to beat. And finally, Perfect Critical. Increases critical damage for a short duration after performing a perfect evade. This is very hard to get off in massive, massive groups of mobs but if you're facing just one very tough opponent, this works perfect and gives you a nice chunky bit of extra damage. Jumping over to the mod slots, I've just put all three in with health, making you as healthy as possible and making the bar a bit longer helps you because obviously you've got a lot of regen going on. So jumping over to his melee and we're using the critical momentum Eskrima sticks, which hopefully I'm pronouncing right. I've only recently started using these. I was using something that gave me a bit more crit damage, but I found these to work even better with this build. Now unfortunately if you look at the grade over on the right I've only managed to get this to a 1, if you can ideally you're going to want a 2 out of 2 and that will be perfect. But again we've modded it all with crit damage but the gear properties are what set it absolutely apart. So knockout rally, knocking out an enemy with a momentum ability increases critical chance and momentum generation for a short duration. This gives us a lot of extra crit chance, it means we crit very often and we've got even more ways to generate our ability energy. 
Also, exploit bullseye and headshot significantly increased critical chance for a short duration. So if you did want to go into that first person mode and hit a headshot every once in a while, that would work in your benefit, but you don't have to with this build, because you've got that knockout rally going on. On the right hand side, momentum generation, 3% comes as standard on this weapon. That helps us out with everything we've got going on in our kit, we generate our abilities so fast we're constantly using them. Again, working in line with everything we've got going on in the build. Jumping over to the ranged, and I'm actually missing one, a little bit of extra crit there, so we're missing 10% damage, but we're using the regenerator darts. These are bar none the best darts if you just want some survivability. This character almost definitely will not fall over because he is just so tanky. But with it, we're also able to put out a nice bit of damage because of that ability trait on our last bit of equipment. With this, we've gone three lots of crit damage again. But again, if you wanted to lose out on a little bit, you could go for the heroics because the crit chance is a little bit lower on this one. The gear properties are absolutely amazing. Technical Fighter heals the wearer and increases base damage after using an ability. I found that if you use an ability that hits very hard, then you use an ability again, especially if the first one knocks someone out, it means that the second one is going to proc for that extra damage and you're going to absolutely wreak havoc. But this one also gives us ultimate defense. Using an ultimate ability greatly increases defense until the wearer is hit. It might not sound very good, but we get our ultimate up more so than anyone else in the game, so having this actually works quite well, and it's almost like a free hit, because when they hit you it takes off very very minimal, even if they're the toughest enemy. Also the icing on the cake, every time you use an ability you're going to be generating some health. Seeing as Nightwing's actually the best at generating momentum in the game, he gains a lot of ability uses and you're constantly topping up on your health, again making him near unkillable. Now for our abilities, what I've done, I've planned out 40, so that anyone who's got to endgame and new game plus should be able to have this popped on. If you want to start going around and getting the extra AP you can, and then you can fill in the kind of ones we're missing out on, but these are the ones I would say you definitely want by endgame. So the first one you've got to unlock is going to be your perfectly timed evade. This is going to help you follow up with a perfect attack afterwards. Just over from here, crit damage 20%, a must, especially with Nightwing. And just in the middle, now when you're marking enemies, everyone takes an extra 10% damage. So this is worth doing constantly in order to get the most damage from you and your team. Just down from here, increase Nightwing's chance of landing a critical hit by 10%. And just underneath, hitting an enemy with a melee attack from a large distance increases the critical chance and critical damage by 15%. Which is probably why you'll see me doing long range attacks, jumping from one person to another rather than going in with lots of combos, because it works out in his favour. Over to his acrobat tree, you're going to kick it off with 20% extra damage from your aerial attack. And then I've picked up both of these, Grant's Nightwing and Extra Momentum Bar, you'll want this 100% all day long, he gets 5, everyone else gets 4. Absolutely amazing. Just over, we've got increased Nightwing's momentum gain by 15%. Always pick this up, it means you'll be able to spam your abilities. Then from here, Nightwing Chain evades by performing a quick succession of back jumps. This mixed with the next two makes him crazy good for being able to do knockdowns and for picking up even more momentum. So completing an evade chain knocks down all nearby enemies, as you can see from the picture just there. And even better than that, performing an evade chain during combat restores a portion of Nightwing's momentum. Again, allowing us to get our health back whenever we're using our skills. Finally, for the Acrobat Tree, using momentum abilities restores a portion of Nightwing's health. This, along with the Regenerator Darts, means that you get a massive chunk of health back, and like I said, you're pretty much unstoppable. Over to the Pack Leader, increase Nightwing's defences and resistances by 10%. Also, working with allies is going to give him massive bonuses, and that's why I think this character is going to be the best in the game for when that heroic assault comes out. Batgirl is going to give him an extra 15% damage, Red Hood is going to be your range 15%, and Robin is going to be 15% on your stealth. If you can stack up kind of players, this guy will definitely work out best if you can chuck in two or three Batgirls because he will get a ridiculous amount of damage from his melee attacks. Red Hood would also work good, Robin not so much to be perfectly honest. Down from here, when Nightwing's health is at least 70%, he gets 5% defense bonus and scales up to 20% of full health. Nightwing's momentum regenerates over time, regeneration stops after filling one, men 
one momentum segment. Gaining any momentum activates regeneration again. As you can see, this guy has more regeneration, more kind of momentum gaining abilities than anything else in the game and is an absolute beast if you like to use skills. Passive skills increase damage, critical chance, defense, momentum, regeneration, ultimate cooldown, a whole bunch of stuff and are shared at 50% of their value with your allies. You have to pick this one up, this guy is a leader for a reason, you're going to be wanting to chuck him into that heroic assault or plan in co-op in some form with this character. Just down from here, Nightwing starts to inflict elemental build up on enemies or heal allies over time. Healing allies over time is ridiculous if you're going to need it and being able to inflict elemental damage can help in some situations, especially again probably for your team. Just under here, Nightwing starts also reduce enemies defense by 10% and increase damage inflicted by allies by 5% for 10 seconds. Over to the last tree and his flying trapeze is probably the easiest traversal in the game, well worth having and it just makes everything easy, you can get everywhere with this once it's unlocked. Nightwing shoots 3 darts at once instead of 1, this gives you more damage, it makes it so that you're actually going to be pressing your Y button because before he was a little bit lackluster. Nightwing's melee attacks can strike enemies from further away. Hand in hand with what we've got earlier, it means you're going to be getting an extra bit of crit damage and crit chance, along with the fact that you can hit them from further distances. And probably the only guy that I would say is 100% needed with his investment in his ultimate because he gets it the most compared to everyone else. Defeating an enemy reduces your nest ability cooldown by 15%. Increase the size of Nightwing's nest. And last but definitely not least, the nest is going to get 150% extra damage, which it still doesn't do the most, you're not using it for that, but is going to have a massive amount of healing going on there because that's giving you another 100%. Inside that thing, you are nigh on invincible, you and your team, and you can have it up very often because when you get back, I think it's 6 or 7 kills, you're going to have it fully buffed back and you'll be able to use it straight away again. If you're not sure what the nest is, it's just going to be a bubble dome, it regenerates you whilst you're in it and gives you massive amounts of defence as well as giving you a little bit of AoE damage. Jumping over to the skills, the ones that I tend to use most often, the nest obviously if you want to be night untouchable, this one right here is absolutely amazing, that's going to be the elemental shockwave for taking on your enemies. And this one, a Nightwing spins and throws his Eskrima sticks. Eskrima sticks hitting all enemies within range. I love a bit of AoE with this guy. I like getting multiple kills and then being able to kind of get the momentum extra and going at it again. If you did want some single target, this one right here is absolutely amazing. Shotgun darts, make sure you're using it up close. Make sure you've already broke their guard and use this and they'll probably fall over. Or if you need to help your team out because of how much momentum you've got going on and I go to the right one, we're going to use Bright Knight. Nightwing symbol glows, stunning nearby enemies and granting allies one momentum segment. This might not sound the most amazing, but if you pair it again with someone like a Batgirl who can use her Batswarm, this will be ridiculous. Buffing her, giving her momentum, using Batswarm, your whole team is going to have that on them and you're going to be doing thousands upon thousands of tick damage to everything around you. For his gear, I've gone with Shinobi because I pretty much thought it was going to look nice on the thumbnail. You can choose whatever you like, but ultimately this one does still look kind of cool. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, hopefully that's helped a few of you out. You will be able to breeze through the campaign, the game and pretty much anything they've got content wise at the moment. Unless they decide to make an additional level, this will be one of the best builds in the game in order to just clear everything easy. As always gamers, full things gaming, full things Xbox, take care. I'll see you on the next day.